Yes. My name is Nzambi, Nzambi Mate. I am founder of Jijenge Makers Limited. Jijenge Makers is an alternative affordable building product manufacturing company. In a nutshell, what that means is we produce um, alternative and sustainable building products. Our first product line are pavers, which in Kenya are popularly known as cabros, made out of recycled um, plastic waste. I was born and raised here in Nairobi. I'm schooled here also in Nairobi, both from high school to university. I went to Jekwat, Juja Masi. Um, I graduated in 2015. I did Bachelor of Science in Physics. My major was uh, material science, um, geophysics. My minor was material science. Um, and then after that, I got uh, my first job at uh, National Oil Corporation. So it's the uh, national um, oil company. Um, I did, I worked in the upstream um, department. Upstream is the exploration and the extraction of um, crude oil from the ground. So I did that for about one and a half years until I realized that's not what I was meant for in this life. So I resigned in 2016. In 2017, I now started Jijeng. Tani resigned in 2016. I went to coast. Uh, I have a family, I have family in coast. So I I went to visit them and then nikiwa kwa bahari imagine oninga kwa bahari unafikia mtu za kushika alafu ni plastic sasa zile ma paper bags manini and, and and that feeling is it's not the best feeling thank you baki hapana something needs to change this is this is wrong it's it's not only unhealthy it's not only disgusting it's it's just wrong sasa hapo ndo nikaanza hiyo ndo ilikuwa eureka moment I started in my mom's backyard. The question I wanted to ask is why plastic? In Nairobi, who tie you on a scrap metal on streets of Nairobi? In fact, uh, like the construction companies, the ones who are making the roads, they're having a hard time with vandalism because the value of uh, metal is it's well established. The value chain is very well established. So the question I ask myself, why can't we do the same for plastic? Because you see plastic is everywhere. Um, and then that's what I started doing research and development. There are seven categories in terms of the packaging space. There are seven categories of plastic waste and category seven is others. So it's a mixture of everything else. So the, the garbage companies, the garbage collectors, they do the rapid sorting. Ile, uh, plastic, cardboards, glass, and then after that they take two yards. So they sell that two yards. So the yards are the ones who, ideally speaking, are the first um, uptakers of the, the plastic waste. So then we started uh, as a business, we started collect, sorting, collecting, sorting and selling to recyclers. So we did that for about two to three months. Then we realized we were collecting more than we were selling to recyclers. So we not Juliza, what more can we do with this plastic that we're left with? So that's why using my background in materials, then comes up research and development on, on social media, on um, unique, uh, internet. That's when I came up with now this concept. I was able to get a brick in 2017. It took me nine months, nine months to get the perfect brick. Like it was like a gestation period even of a normal human being. Because during that process, I was able a brick and I was able to and they gonna finish it. So, I, if I need says to me, I after two weeks, I'm letting go. Ne, ivo, 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 ivo. But then after nine months, look, I can let a like different contractor look. I say, hey, okay, ihi, kuna kit. Now after that, the battle, I was alone, still alone. And then after that, I, I, I thought, okay, fine. Now that I've known how to make one brick, how do I make a thousand? Because you cannot make a road with one brick. You need a thousand or more. So, after then, necessitated the question of machinery, because by hand you cannot make a thousand. And then that's when I found out the machines that I was finding in China or India or those um, European countries, they were either specifically for cement blocks or for plastic. There was nothing there in between. So we decided, okay, fine. If uh, Mohammed cannot go to the mountain, we will bring that mountain to Mohammed. So that comes up in the machine. In 2017, I did the prototype one with. In 2018, I, I went to school to study in the US, so I did also fundraising. And then in 2019, we started making the machinery. And then 2020, we launched the product in the market. Well, let's um, head to the facility. I'll show you the whole process, how we do it from the plastic waste collection all the way to the finished product. So come, let's see. This is the first step. So ideally speaking, this is the back end of everything. 
Um, so this is the first stage. So this is a crusher, it's currently under maintenance. But uh, what it does, it crushes the plastic into small granules. For example, like what you see here. This is an example of the output. So in this uh, stage, we get what we call the post-industrial and the post-consumer plastic. So this is an example of post-consumer plastic waste. So these are bottle tops. Here we process three types of plastic. We process what we call the HDP, that's the high density polyethylene. This we process LDPE. LDPE is the wrappers, so some some like this. And then we process PP. PP are the the carry bags. The no, the takeaway, the takeaway containers. Uh, most Tupperwares, like the containers you use in the kitchen, those are PP. After it's crushed, it looks like this. So these are the crushed plastics. So we take the plastic and we mix with sand. The sand in this case is what we call an aggregate. So the aggregate is to add um, the strength and to be able to hold the weight um, of the material. And also it's at this stage that you add the color pigment. So for example, if you are making red bricks, we add the red pigment here. If you're working blue or green, this is the stage at which we add the color pigments. So from here, we take that mixture, we feed it into an extruder. So this is called an extruder. As the name suggests, it extrudes. So what it does, it takes the plastic and the sand, mixes them together, so melts the plastic to bind the sand and the color pigment, and it comes out as um, in a molten form. It's like uh, ugali, looks like ugali. Um, in this case, um, because uh, different plastics have different um, melting points, for example, um, I don't know if you remember your basic physics. Um, impurities increase the melting point and they lower the boiling point. In this case, the sand becomes an impurity to the plastic. So the plastic melts at about 125 degrees centigrade to 400. Here it melts at about 450 because of the sun. So it comes here. And then it comes out here. So a bit, sorry, just to be careful, it's very hot. So this is the mixture uh, that is, comes out. So in materials, this is what called polymer concrete. So it's, um, the, the plastic melts to combine the sun. So you take this molten material and then you feed it to an extruder. So this is called a press, sorry, feed it to a press. So this is called a hydraulic press. And as the name suggests, it, its work is just to press. So once we take the molten form, you weigh it. So different blocks have different uh, weigh, um, weights. So the, uh, so the thicker the block, the more the heavier it is. So we measure it. And then after we measure it in this, in this press we have, uh, it's, a nine mold, it's a nine mold press. So ideally speaking, it produces nine favors every three minutes. So you feed, you feed the, the molten material inside. Like for example, what she's doing, she's just feeding the, the mold. So it's more like baking cookies. It's nothing extraordinary. So in this stage, the idea is to give it shape and also to lower the temperature. So when it comes out of here, it comes out at about 400 to 300 to 400 degrees centigrade. When you put it here, we are lowering it to about 100 or 70 degrees centigrade and also shaping it. And then after that, so here is what we call a cooling bath. As the name suggests, its idea is just to cool. And this is just normal water. It's a bit hot, but it's normal water. So the idea is to take the material from 70 degrees further to room temperature because you need to have it at room temperature for it to be processed. And then after that, we have what we call the finishing stage. So when we were making the mold, you kind of lost precision, but you are working on that. So this is the stage at which we do. We do the finishing and then the brick is ready for production. So in a nutshell, this is it. And the beauty about this brick is three things. It's stronger, it's cheaper, it's lighter. So just to prove it, doesn't break. The construction space in Kenya is very rigid. We have been building the same way for years and centuries because, well, it is working, so there's no, there's no need of something. If it's not broken, why reinvent, why fix it? So if we had come with a block, come aside to on research and development phase, you have to make an actual block. We needed a subtle way to get our industry without creating so much ripples. Therefore, we can also understand the market and also understand the product. So that's why we decided to start with Pavers. We were fortunate enough to be UNEP's Young Champions of the Earth um, 2020 for the Africa region. Um, that is just among the many awards. You have also won um, Transforming a Lives Award. It's a UK-based um, foundation um, award. And um, in, a, in addition to that, we, we have collaborated with different um, organizations. For example, Habitat for Humanity are one of our partners. 
Um, as we speak also, we are trying to onboard different companies because as I stated, we have what we call the post-industrial and the post-consumer. So the post-industrial, we are, we are onboarding more companies. For example, the likes of Coca-Cola and the likes of London Distillers Kenya to be able to be suppliers in the industrial, post-industrial. And also in the post-consumer, we are working with more yards to collect that. So that's, I think, one of our achievements. And then for me as a person and as a founder, the greatest achievement for me is the team. I think because you can build the best solution, but if you don't have a team to, to figure that out, because you know when it comes to solution, it's, it's good if you have a solution, but the, the impact comes from multiplying or rather replicating that solution over and over again. And so you need a really good team to, have that, to put those structures in place. And I'm fortunate enough to say Jijenge team is one of the best, if not the best. Why would someone use Jijenge Pevas or Jijenge product? Right now it's stronger, it's cheaper, it's lighter. And if you see in a building product about 60% plus minus of the cost implication of a construction project or any other project in the civil work space goes to materials. So if you can get it a better material quality that is not only alternative but sustainable at a super cost, why not? So yeah, stronger, cheaper, lighter. Our biggest challenge is a combination of few things. Number one, production capacity. Um, let's just say demand is not our problem, our problem is supply. Because we have more demand than we, than we can supply. So we need to figure out, okay, how do, we, um, how do we get the resources on time? How do we get the production capacity on time? The other thing is uh, plastic waste. Because you know, we are, at the end of the day, we are using plastic waste. And the waste comes in different shapes, forms, and sizes. So the, the integrity of plastic in a van. So we need to also figure out how do we do quality control. Also is an, another challenge. And then the final challenge is, because this is a relatively new skill in market, we need to upskill people, we need to train our own team. So yeah, those are the three main ones. The future of the company, uh, we want to be leaders in alternative building products. So ideally speaking, um, I envision a future where people will not, ideally speaking, be building the way we are building now. Maybe in 50 to 100 years time, I believe we'll be building different. We are in a society which uh, it has been loosely coined as a microwave society. People want things fast, fast. But it's not just fast, but it's also it's um, reliable, it's, 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 it's timely. It's, it's, you want something that it doesn't waste resources, both time implication to it and also material implication to it. And so we see a feature where you come, you want a house, we give you a kit. So ideally speaking, how you buy any electronic. You go, you're given a kit, you go and assemble at your own home. So imagine if you can buy a house that way. You come, you give that respect, we manufacture for you your house, you go and assemble inside. So we want to be a feature in such technologies amongst others. For our social media platforms, it's Jijenge underscore makers, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. Um, also to get us um, our contacts, if you want to, uh, as far as purchasing, um, our numbers on the social media, but I can just say it's 0703-289-506, 0703-289-506. So just call if you want um, either a site to visit, you want a fundi to come and see your site and give you advice or place an order or do an installation. Whatever problems you have as far as building and civil works of uh, compound is concerned or road, call Jijenge.